Good morning, brethren. Good morning. I wanted to open us today in John chapter 13. It's the account where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. I'm going to read um, a few verses at a time and then um, kind of go through a, through 17, starting in verse 1. It says, Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given him all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After he poureth water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. First, I wanted to consider the things that Jesus knew when he entered into this time of service. He knew his hour had come and yet was still pouring himself out to nourish the disciples. Jesus was never self-seeking, even in the midst of what would be his greatest trial. Verse, in the second verse, it says Jesus knew that Judas was about to betray him, and he would still wash the feet of his betrayer. Three, he had been given all things. He knew this. He knew he was God's son and would be returning to him soon. And even while knowing these things, he still laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. This was a living out of what was done in heaven when the word would humble himself and set aside his authority and become flesh. Philippians 2, 6 through 8 says, Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Um, verses 6 through 11 is what I'm going to read next. It says, Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. And Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus said unto him, He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And ye are clean, but not all, for he knew who should betray him. And therefore he said, Ye are not all clean. Um, I was reminded that Peter responded here in a very similar way that um, John the Baptist responded to Jesus when he came to be baptized. In Matthew um, 3, 14 and 15, John forbade him when he, went, when he came to, be, bar to um, be baptized, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou unto me? And Jesus answered, said unto him, Suffer it be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. And then he suffered him. And John also referred to Jesus as being one whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. But like John, Peter, upon hearing the truth spoken, hearkens to the words of Jesus. Peter's desire to remain with the Lord is so great, he wants his hands and his head to be washed in addition to his feet, just to make sure. But this is not necessary, and Jesus expounds why. When we are baptized into Christ, we receive a thorough washing away of all sin, filth, and corruption. Once Jesus has cleansed us, we remain clean by him as well. However, now we only need to wash our feet. This continual washing isn't due to believers perpetually diving headlong into sin. If any man does sin, we do have an advocate with the Father. And if we confess it, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But rather this cleansing is for the pilgrim who is traveling through a land who is looking for a better city. Amen. We continually need our feet washed because they are the means we have to traverse through the world 
and they're constantly touching the earth. Washing our feet removes the contamination of the earth that made them dirty so that we can remain clean. Amen. 12 through 16 says, So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said, Know ye what I have done to you? Ye call me Master and Lord, and ye say, Well, for so I am. <coughs> if I then, your Lord and Master, have washed your feet, ye also ought to wash one another's feet. Mm -hmm. For I have given you an example that ye should do as I have done to you. Mm -hmm. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he is sent greater than he that sent him. Jesus, no doubt, has everyone's full attention by doing this washing. Mm -hmm. And now he asks, Know ye what I have done? Mm -hmm. Jesus expects his disciples to learn of him, to be able to comprehend the works that he performs, and, he, and to understand the words that he speaks. I know the disciples would see more later when the Holy Ghost would come, but at least for now at this point they saw their Lord and their Master, the one that was without spot and, and blameless, gird himself with a towel and serve them by washing their feet. And this was no small thing. Amen. Amen. We are told to do the same. And so to open this Lord's Day, I wanted to remind us that when we come to these meetings, we are washing each other's feet, just as Jesus has commissioned us to do. We've been in the world, but not of it. We've been there all week, and the earth just by way of living in it, tends to cling to your feet. Yeah. I kind of had a picture of like with static electricity, it just kind of picks stuff up, just clings to you. So as we come together in the name of Christ, and we begin to talk of heavenly agendas and God's purpose, mm -hmm. the sacrifice and the present intercession of Christ, the ministry of the Holy Spirit, the promises of God, the hope of eternal life, it removes the remnants of the earth yeah. from us, Amen. and it leaves us washed. First John 3.16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. This word ought isn't like, I know I should, but I really don't want to, kind of attitude. Mm -hmm. It's more of a constraining longing to be a benefit to the brethren, born out of your knowledge from what Christ has done for you. We see Jesus, the only begotten of the Father, the King of kings and Lord of lords, humbling himself as a servant. And we, who are Christ's servants, do the same for each other. Mark 9.35 says, If any man desire to be first, the same shall be last of all and servant of all. Matthew 20.16, So the last shall be first and the first shall be last. So we have Jesus, who is the King, and humbled himself even to the death of the cross like we read in Philippians and then the next verse verses 9 through 11 says wherefore God hath it highly exalted him yeah. <clears throat> and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in the earth and things under the earth mm -hmm. and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father Notice here that no one washed their own feet. This was a group activity. It involves someone performing the washing as well as a subject to be washed. And consequently, both offices require humility. Someone must be humble to serve, and the one being served must be humble to receive it. When a brother or sister has given their time in preparation of feeding of the sheep, they have girded themselves of a servant ready to wash. And when the people have prepared their hearts to receive the truth and to listen with ears that hear and receive the word spoken by his brother or sister with gladness as coming from the Lord, they have been washed. Amen. <clears throat> Verse 17 is the last one I wanted to end on. It says, If ye know these things, happy are ye if ye do them. Mm -hmm. And this is so true. It does make the heart glad. When we perceive an opportunity to serve the brethren, and then we follow through with it. Amen. It's very gratifying when you see that the Lord has chosen you to be a servant to his people. Because remember, we remember what we do unto the Lord. I mean, what we do unto our brethren, we are doing it as unto the Lord. 
I'll go ahead and open with a word of prayer this morning, and Sister Jean will have our class.